So 8 months later, it's finally obtainable in game, but was it worth the wait? Today people we take a look at the Mongol. How's it going guys, my name's DPJ and today I'll bring you another BR3 video. If you do enjoy it, leaving a like really helps out and subscribe if you do want to see more. So the Mongol is a weapon we originally saw in gameplay of Borderlands 3 before the game was released. Upon its release though, the weapon was nowhere to be seen. Today, May 14th slash 15th as I'm recording this on the border of midnight, Gearbox have made it available. So 8 months later they fixed what people thought was a bug holding this weapon back. And if you are sitting there thinking maybe it was purposely held back, I mean that could indeed be the case, but it has been in the game files since release. And I can confirm this as I've seen many many people play with this thing on PC and have had it for months. But hey, it's finally here, it's finally a legit weapon we can farm in game. And while people, I think it's actually quite good. Most people will be asking though, is it top tier? Is it one of the new best weapons in the game? Is it the new best launcher in the game? Simple answer to that is, is no, it isn't the best. But you gotta remember, now things are going to be scaled with the two upcoming patches Gearbox not long spoke about. We will see things change in terms of weapons getting more powerful, and some of the more powerful weapons being brought down a peg or two. Weapons haven't yet been discussed with us, so we don't know exactly what they are, but in my opinion I'll expect to see the OPQ system receive a nerf, the yellow cake for sure receive a nerf, possibly the lob, although I hope not, and maybe a few other weapons. Either way things are changing. So this weapon in probably a month from now could be much better than what it is now. So this Mongol is a weapon exclusive at the moment to Funk and Sloth who can be located upon Conrad's hold on Pandora. And as far as I am aware it drops with any element the game offers or none at all. The Mayhem 10 variant I do believe is closer to that 30k damage though. The highest one I think I've seen is 27k damage. But the only ones I've seen with that higher damage have no elements. That's not to say they don't exist though. Man is a horde animal. Consumes reduced ammo per shot. Just kidding, no it doesn't. Well actually that isn't true. If you think about how this thing works, because yes it consumes 2 ammo per shot, but it fires up to 14 shots per 2 ammo it consumes, and you can see this when you slow it down. The longer that initial shot, that initial rocket travels, the more it shoots out, which is pretty cool. So this is a weapon you do have to think about using. Use it at a range to make it more efficient. Now using it against a single target, it does great damage for sure, but it isn't on that scale of the current yellow cake, as that thing's damage is almost instant. And when you compare it to this, this is quite the opposite. Now this Mongol does have a great great splash damage though, which in my opinion is how you make the most out of this weapon at a short range. As you can see here against Gigamind. Damage is fine yes, but when you hit him with that splash damage when he is cornered, damage is on another level. And using it within a slaughter shaft I for sure was having super super fun. I know it isn't the most powerful weapon in the game, but if used correctly it's definitely up there. Now it seemed to me like this thing's drop rate was extremely low, me only getting about 3 variants in about 50 runs and all were trash. So credit to my pal Silent Ray for their Sentinel Coil version you can see me using within this video. Now I actually really like the weapon and using it with my current build it's super great. I'm always fine because I've counted that with the fish slap and the cut purse, meaning I get my ammo back quite often and this means I can use heavy weapons such as this for a longer period of time. And if you are interested in them builds, I've actually got two, I've got one I built around the Chaosin, which you basically get infinite ammo for, and I built another one around the Yellow Cake. This works great with both, but it's definitely more efficient with that Yellow Cake build. But both will be linked within the video description if you do want to check them out. They make easy work of Mayhem 10, they really do. So after seeing a couple of posts of people stating this uh, Mongol was underwhelming, although I definitely wouldn't agree with that, for sure I wouldn't say it was worth the 8 months wait. But all in all I'm quite happy with the weapon, I actually think it's a good addition to the game and it's definitely unique to itself. Now the variant I've used throughout this video, the only element it offers is with that sentinel cryo anointment when that comes into play, the weapon itself doesn't actually have any elements, but seeing as this weapon does drop offering all elements the game offers, corrosive radiation, cryo and incendiary, with the right one for the right circumstance, this could be a great great weapon for sure. So the people saying it's underwhelming, I don't think they're using it right, if I'm truly honest. I myself felt it was doing great, and in the slower shaft against relatively high tier enemies, it was making easy work of them for the most part. 
and actually find myself having fun and wanting to continue on using which I don't really get that feeling with many many heavies in this game. The yellow cake and this are only a few of a massive heavy loot pool that I really enjoy using. But yeah all in all it is a great great weapon, I wouldn't say it was worth the 8 months wait but if this was freshly dropped today and we didn't have previous knowledge of it, I would say it was a great addition to the game. So this Fladoff Mongol Rocket Launcher is a weapon exclusive at the moment to Funk and Sloth, who are located on Pandora upon Comrade's Hold, can drop off in any element or none at all, and is a weapon I do recommend you at least checking out. But on that note guys, we have come to the end of the video. If you guys enjoyed it, leaving a like really helps out. If you're new around here and want to see more Borderlands, be sure to subscribe. And if you never want to miss a video I upload, you can turn notifications on by hitting that bell button. But guys, thanks as always for stopping by. Hopefully you enjoyed the video and hopefully I will see you on that next one.